Hey guys, and welcome to another video. So I have finally started my exams and oh my gosh, literally after my first one, I was like, I'm already done with exams and I've literally only done two. And I'm so happy because I've only got five more left. And that seems like, although there's like a lot of information and like content for those five, it's like, I've only got five more left and I'm done. And I'm thinking about like back to GCSEs, how do people do like 20 exams? That's actually crazy. So I mean, to all of you doing your GCSEs, like round of applause, well done. I don't know how, I would never do that again. 20 exams is intense. I mean, saying that A-levels or ASs are still pretty intense. And so yeah, I thought for today's video, because I'm in the exam mood and you know, I'm going through exams, doing loads of past papers, all of that, I thought I could do a video all about exam technique as that's something that I feel like I need to improve on and I'm sure lots of you guys will be like wanting to hear some tips all about it and so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So I have here a couple of tips that I found after doing papers myself or like from friends and things that we found like are really like we need to work on that. So first of all is when you get into that exam and you know they're like oh time started you can start your exam first thing you want to be doing is rather than turning the page going on to the first question it's just taking like 20 seconds or something to flick through that exam booklet and this is so so useful because it kind of gives you like a little like oh just checks how many like questions there are especially with something which like I know maths usually has the same format like every year but with a lot of other subjects like sciences you never know whether it's going to be like five questions like really big questions or like 10 questions where they've kind of spread it out in the marks so definitely do that because I know my friend for a biology test yesterday she didn't go through it and so she thought she was at the end of the question and then she was like oh this is fine there's like two minutes left I finished this question all good and then she turns over and there was a double spread and she didn't she, she missed out like two pages like two sides because she didn't have enough time because she thought she had so much time so she spent loads of time on each question which you know you can't really be like you can't really afford to be losing two sides of questions it's really not too great and I know with my maths exam on Monday now usually when I do maths exams I tend to get through them pretty quickly I have at least like half an hour 40 minutes to get checking my answers and so I was on like question 12 or something, which I was like, oh, this is the last question. Perfect, I've still got half an hour left. And so I was spending like ages and ages because I couldn't do this question. I was spending ages doing it. And then I looked underneath and literally in bold, it was like question 13 is printed on the like next, li next sheet. And I was like, what? And I turned over and there was like a whole like seven marks and I was like, what? But I managed to get everything done. But yeah, you don't want to be in that position. It's really not nice. So literally beginning of the exam, take about 10 seconds, 20 seconds, flick through so you can see how many questions you need to be doing. So you can be like continuously whilst you're doing your exam, be like, okay, I'm on question seven, there are 20 questions and I've got an hour left. And you can just kind of see where you're at, like pace yourself in that sense. So that's really important. And another thing which is really good about taking a flick through that exam booklet, and this is something that my chemistry teacher told me, because I know with our external, internal exams even, I know that sort of we're going to have five questions based on each of the main topics. And so what the teacher said is basically, look through that booklet and see where the topics are and just go ahead and do the topics that you prefer or you find easiest first and I think that's so so important because when you're doing exams don't do them just in the order you know question one then two then three you need to be really strategic with exams and I, so, I know that sounds really like okay we need to calm down but the way that I see it when you're in an exam you want to get the most amount of marks as possible and I suppose the only analogy that I can really think of is if you've ever played like a Mario game or like literally any video game to be honest is like all about getting the most amount of like points right and so the way that I imagine it is if I'm like little Mario or whatever and I'm jumping up and down I'm trying to get as many gold coins as possible and that's you in that exam so literally when you look through that booklet and be like okay that topic I'm really good on that one not so much do the topics that you find easiest or you know you'll get the most amount of marks on. You know, don't spend like 10 minutes on that three marker that you're struggling on. Instead, go ahead and do questions that you're better at and get those marks. Because I know it's really important to attempt your questions, definitely. 
but do the questions that you know you will 100% or like 90% get correct because at the end of the day it's about getting the most marks as opposed to giving everything a try and like you know don't you know try everything but just try and get the most amount of marks and if that means doing your questions you find easiest first do that and I think that's super important for questions where or like papers where it's literally like a mark a minute like I know for my chemistry exams it's crazy like section A it's pretty much a mark a minute and then you have section B which is multiple choice and literally it's ridiculous because each question is worth one mark and each question takes about three minutes four minutes to do so literally something like that do those questions last do all the questions that you find easiest and then not so easiest and then go on to those one markers because they take so much time and you only get one mark for it so basically just be really strategic with your exams and at the end of the day, you want to get the most amount of marks as possible. So kind of look at it like that. Um, question, like, or not question, tip number two is underlining your questions. Now, this is something I probably have spoken about before because I find this super duper helpful, especially when you've been given a question which is super bulky, loads and loads of text, and you're sort of there like, oh God, what, what do you want from me kind of thing? Use a pen, use a pencil, use a highlighter, whatever you can, and just underline the key words in that question so you know minus any like faffing like words like words that aren't really necessary and it's just really easy and really clear what is it that the question wants from me and then directly kind of answer it like that because I know when you get loads and loads of text it can be a little bit intimidating so just break it down and find out exactly what the question wants from you uh, tip number three which kind of links to tip number two don't be scared with scary questions I know I sometimes do this especially in biology with stuff like immunity with like bacteria and viruses often the exam board put like a bacterial virus you have probably never even heard of and that you can be like what we didn't learn that I, I don't know what that is and you get really worried and uh but don't don't look at it like that exam boards do that on purpose because they know that can throw kind of candidates which is really mean but what can you do the the way that I see it is that don't focus on like that that bacteria that virus could have any name in the world and it won't affect you and that that isn't what the like question is asking. You know, often it's sort of applying your knowledge to that question. And I know with science that's becoming more and more of like a thing with questions. Instead of it being exactly like, what is this? You would have to use like I'm trying to think of like an example. I suppose something like I like, I don't know, cell division or something. Instead of it being an obvious what is cell division, they might instead be like talking about it relevant to this particular organism. And you may not know that organism, but you know what cell division is. So just apply your knowledge of cell division to that question. So yeah, don't be worried if you see something and you're like, I've never heard of that in my life. Chances are that that name could be substituted with any name. Would it make a difference? It's just about using your knowledge, which you have, and applying it to the question. Because that's just that's basically the technique. It's the exam techniques that you really want to be kind of using. Um, number four is definitely looking at the marks of question and looking at the question and really correlating the two. So for example, if a question is asking you to describe a graph and it's worth about two marks, three marks, don't be explaining what the graph like does. Don't, don't do that. You literally just need to be like, oh, the graph decreases at this point or increases or fluctuates, whatever. You do not need to be like, the graph decreases at this point because of this. Like, they don't want to know because there's no point doing because and chances are you saying because or you explaining or you analyzing you going that extra step forward and not doing what the question is asking you're not going to get any extra marks for that and sometimes you could get no marks for it because you're not doing what the exam the examiner wants and i know for english gcsc i think it was uh, english language i think for us like it was like question one was something sort of lot it was like sort of it was really basic the question it was literally like describe it what the like passage is all about and i know lots of my friends and those people in my year would go the step further and explain it and you wouldn't get any marks because it's not what the question is asking so once again underline it and then look at it what is it what words are used in that question and how many marks is it and that kind of gives you a feel for how much detail you need to go in your answer and how much you should be writing so definitely look at those um, my final point is about sort of things like six markers and this is all about looking at um, making sure you're writing and you're 
and kind of just flows a bit better. So for example, I know when I was doing a past paper uh, in biology, one of the six markers was like, oh, how does the DNA structure make it suitable for you know its function or whatever, something like that. Rather than going straight away and writing down every single thing you know about it and kind of waffling and going a little bit over the top with it, kind of take a breather, read what the question is asking, and then maybe on the side or like little kind of draw little lines about like on the question itself, take a few moments to sort of almost like bullet point points that you could say because it makes your writing, when you write it out, it makes so much sense. There's it has much more like it has it has a bit more fluidity with it and it links a lot better rather than it looking like, oh, oh the candidate just remembered that and then they just added it. It doesn't look and doesn't read as well. Whereas if, if you kind of point it out and be like, oh this goes to this, which is this, next point this to this to this it means when you write it out, it looks so, so much better and a lot clearer and un like easier to understand for the examiner. So definitely do that. Take a few moments and just, I know you might be like, what, but timing, there's not enough time, but it does, it can sometimes mean that you get better marks. And I know for something like science for GCSEs, at least with OCR, a lot of those six markers, you would, to get the top band, to get the five, six marks, you need it to be coherent and easy to understand so something like bullet pointing it to small like on the side can make that make you like get those top marks um so yeah that is pretty much everything from me i hope that helps you i know lots of you are still in exam mood and so whether you're doing your as's or a levels or gcse's or just little topic tests i wish you know i wish you all the best of luck i hope they're going really well I have five more left so next week's video i should probably have like two more left or something i don't know I just can't wait for them to be over. I'm literally just like, after next week, after next Friday, I'm just going to be so happy and chilling and relaxing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Comment down below any other tips that you have for exam technique to share with myself and everyone else. Um, if you want me to talk about any other things, any other particular subjects maybe, do comment them down below. Don't forget, I have my own channel, Bit of a Fangirl, where I make videos every single week. And go check out my Twitter, which is at underscore me, Shapi, and also my Instagram, which is also at Bit of a Fangirl. And that's pretty much everything from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I shall see you next time. Bye!